Oh, yeah, we want to welcome you to the Free Rain Show. Thank you for tuning in. We've got a new and uh, a great show for you today. As usual, um, we're going to bring you some stuff, and we're going to talk about freedom, um, ask you to kind of explore that space with us today. We have a special guest I'm really excited to introduce here um, in just a few moments. But wherever you find yourself on a Monday, Thursday, or Saturday, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, Mondays, 6.05, Thursdays, 6.05, Saturdays, 5.05 p.m. Um, and as always, you can get a hold of us at freerainshow at gmail.com. That's freerainshow at gmail.com. I think most of our listeners are connecting with us through Facebook. And that's the Free Rain Show. That's at Facebook. And we certainly want to hear from you. Uh, we want to talk about stuff that is relevant to where your heart is at right now. Where do you find yourself? Where, where is your lens right now? Um, you know, one of the, one of the craziest things um, that was ever said were these simple words. Where are you? Um, where are you? Where are our listeners right now? Um, you know, when, if we want to talk about and experience freedom in the world and in life and in all that this, this life has to offer, <clears throat> we need to ask ourselves that question often. Where am I? Or we need to be able to look at other people in the eyes and just say, hey, where are you right now? You know, after uh, Adam and Eve took that fateful bite and that fateful piece of fruit, right, that was the first question they were asked, right? God, God shows up on the scene and he says, I mean, he was, he's there, right, all along, but he's, in the story, he shows up on the scene and he, and he says, where are you, right? Remember, they were running, they were hiding, um, and that was the beginning of a long, dark road for humanity, so we like to explore on this show exactly where are we. Uh, and we're going to talk about that today with a very special guest and a special friend of mine um, that we're going to introduce here just in a moment. Um, it's going to be some good stuff today. So I hope that you are, um, if you're someone that likes to take notes as you listen, grab that notepad and that pen. Uh, if you're drive time, um, concentrate on the road, but be prepared today to be educated and, and explore some stuff. Um, with our special guest today, Dr. Nick Goodwin. Nick, um, we are super pumped to have you. Oh, wow. Thank you. I feel so welcome. You, you're the man. Um, we're going to let everybody out there know about, about you today, but I'm also excited to have you because you are a personal friend of mine. Yeah, my buddy. Um, and, and, uh, which gives me some street cred. Okay, right on. Um, and I think that's actually how I got hired for this job. No, I go, oh, because you dropped Nick Goodwin. I did. I did. No. Like, Wait, you know Nick Goodwin? That's right. That's right. So that was my open door. <laughs> um, in all, in all honesty, ladies and gentlemen, and, and listeners, we are we're super pumped to have Nick because he's someone who who I believe has opened doors. Speaking of mm -hmm. opening doors, and we talk about freedom on this show, right? The Free Reign Show. He's someone who's been uh, creating avenues, opening doors, helping people explore freedom for quite some time. Um, longer than I've known him, but I've known him now for about a decade. Yeah, a long time. Um, we've had a, a, a really cool friendship. Um, he, Nick, is you've been someone that I can go to and talk with about all sorts of crazy things. Yeah. And we on the show like to get into some crazy things. Today we're going to tone it down a little bit. Okay. Because we do have some stuff that I specifically want to get to. Sweet. Um, but just just for the uh, the listeners, um, a little kind of. I guess intro to when um, we when we first I feel like we really really connected. We had known each other for a little while. Yeah. Um, we we did this church camp out thing together yeah, with the kiddos and with the kiddos and everybody went on this hike. Yeah. And and we didn't go. No. Um, and I'm not going to call you out for this. I'm not a hiker. Oh, I, okay. I, I you know and you know me. I love athletics. Love yeah. to coach baseball. Just went to Africa. Took you know all this kind of stuff. Like doing stuff. Right. Um. Walking and running okay. just for the sake just of walking yeah, and yeah. running. So, like, am I going to win this, or are we going to, like, going to see who walks it? No, we're just going to, okay, we're going to walk. All yeah, right. that's a tough one for me. That's <laughs> that's a tough sell for old Aaron Tilbury yeah. um, is to just, to move. I, you know, I, I kid all the time with people, but I'm I'm actually pseudo-serious when they say, like, do you run? And I'm like, when people are chasing me, <laughs> yeah. like, that yeah. is. If I'm, or if I'm chasing somebody, yeah, I have to figure it out. That's like, right. If someone lifted, me? yeah, if someone grabbed the car stereo out of my ride, <laughs> I might be running. But other than that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, all right. 
So, uh, so that's when you and I first met. We wound yeah. up having just an amazing conversation about the Holy Spirit. Right. Yep. Um, there's some stuff that we're still in our personal lives, and, and we still talk about that conversation from time to time. It was, there, a, it was a big conversation for me, too, as far as... Uh, yeah. I think, I think it was a big part of me for, like, exercising. We're almost talking about something and doing it in because we talked about, you know, the idea of two, when two are, you know, um, when two Christians or whatever are together, then I am present. And, and I, I feel... And I really felt so motivated and moved by that just by, by finally talking to somebody about Jesus in a way that I was excited about it, not obligatory. Yeah. It was just – and I remember that too. And, and I don't mind hiking, but I think for me I was like, oh, cool, I can kick it with Aaron for a little bit. This is a good opportunity. I, you know, I don't know if we kicked it a whole lot before that. And it was We hadn't cool. really. I think yeah. that was our first like real deep talk. Yeah, and I remember we both really I, – I don't – I think we felt both like, yeah, this is really powerful. Like mm. just us getting together and just talking Christ is sort of – is Christ-like in a sense that it's as if Christ, you know, was here. Or us going out and doing things yeah. as a team. Not necessarily just praying. Right? A lot of people want it to be like, if we pray in numbers, then God will like, I guess if there's three of you, then I might think about it, right? But it was more or less <laughs> like, no, no, if you get two or three or four people together yeah. to go love on people, then, then that's, the, that's the same quality of love that Christ gave when he was here. Yeah, that's good. Uh, you, you know, well, I kind of love that you, um, and gosh, uh, and I'm, Listeners, I promise there is some really cool stuff. This is all cool stuff. Yeah. There is some specific stuff that we want to talk to, to Nick about. Uh, I, I mentioned Dr. Nick Goodwin. Yeah, he is right. officially a doctor. Yeah. Maybe he's got the Ph.D. and all that kind of stuff. There is some stuff that we're going to talk about regarding mental health yeah. on this show today that we want to get to. I just I don't want to skip over this stuff because okay. it, because it's still powerful in both of our lives in terms of Absolutely. you know that discussion. It opened some future discussions up for us. Mm -hmm. And what you touch on, Nick, is something that we're talking about on the show a lot. And yeah. I would hope that I, I am trying to walk out, not just on this hour program, yeah. is being actionable with what we believe. Definitely. Um, and the idea that Christ calls us to be actionable and that there is power and goodness in that action, yeah. in, the, in the action of compassion, the action right. of love. And so, uh, there's my little segue, and Let's so you... Mm -hmm stepped up in an actionable way with the Jonah Project. Okay. And our listeners may know that we uh, have a sponsor um, for our show, the Jonah Project in Spokane, which is um, the only actionable anti-trafficking agency in Spokane. They yeah. are housing and relocating. Um, and when I say they, I mean guys like you, Nick. And in yeah. fact, you, Nick, have been a member of the Jonah Project from pretty much close to its inception. Yeah. Um, you certainly have been an encourager and, ins and a supporter from its inception. Right, right. And you have actually gone and helped relocate yeah. women and children. Yeah. This is something that you have done um, in concert with, with the team that you work with. Right. But, you know, we're at this point... We're not joking. This is this is real life stuff. Women and children that have been in a bad way. You and your guys have gone and gotten them to safety. And it, it's such a cool. In the times that I've done it, and even going back to what we're talking about, as far as like two, you know, two have you know congregated in my name to go and do something actionable. And every time it's happened, I have felt so um, so even ill prepared. Like, what is this? You're looking at this whole like you're looking at picking up somebody who's gone through hell. And and bringing them to safety is mm. such such a such a mountain, and going in thinking how are we going to do this? What is this going to look like? Are we going to be okay? And then it working out despite all of our blunders, right? All because it's you know you've never done it before. We've only done it a couple times, and it, you make all the mistakes you can make, and then at the end of the day, the girl is safe or the person is safe, despite of you. Not despite of you because of you, but the fact that it just you're like this was all God. Yeah. God worked through me. This is completely divine. It was all sovereign. It was just, it's, I was, he picked me to be here mm. to help this girl. And he then rescued her. And I got to be even the tool, despite all of my human flaws, despite all of the mistakes I made in the process. And you're just like, I, I was so honored to be, you know, in a front row seat watching God save people actionably. And I, and I got to be a part of that. And that's why it's such a, um, and you feel Jesus there, right? You mm, feel that. Yeah. It's, it's not me. It's Jesus. It's yeah. Because I'm screwing up. I, I don't feel prepared. But the girl's safe at the end of the day, and it's a miracle. It's yeah. Fantastic. And and uh, you know, you, you and you are you're a very humble dude. It's one of the things I love about you. Um, and you're also a realistic dude. Yeah. Um. And and when I say humble, the reason I'm, I bring that up is that 
certainly you bring skills to the table. Yeah. Um, and, and, and working, you've got two family members mm-hmm. um, that you've done this stuff with. Yeah. That, um, that have helped, uh, you know, shout out to Howard and Nick. Howard um, and yeah. Yeah, excuse me, Howard and Than. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking with Nick. Howard yeah, yeah. and Howard and Than. Nathaniel. Um yes, yes. Who um and no joke, like this this relocation team is comprised of mental health professionals yeah. and even a bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. So Than Dan's a bodybuilder. Yeah, I mean he's prof- he's literally a professional bodybuilder yeah, now, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's pretty cool. Um but but you guys bring skills to the table. Definitely. And but but the humility is the idea that you you work to prepare. You bring those skills with you, but that you are stepping forward in faith. You, you yeah. don't exactly know what you're going to find on the other side of that door yeah. when you go to rescue a girl, and, no and yet you go anyway. Yeah, um, which is, I just think is really powerful. And so, um, thank you for for what you do in the community in terms of in terms of the the relocation and, and the care yeah. of these women and children. Is there a um, is there a moment with the Jonah Project that stands out as one where you go? You know, I mean, you mentioned you feel Jesus in all of this, but is there a moment where you, where you said, you know, I, I kind of can't wait to maybe get home and talk to my wife about this. This was powerful. Yeah, I think I think the biggest feeling that I had, and I think this is, I can think of two times specifically, where it, you know, I think it was just an honest to goodness getting a person out of a bad situation. Like it was a straight up rescue, like as clean as a rescue can get. And I remember definitely feeling like. Um, that I was a part of something that was incredible. Yeah. That I was a I was a part of a, 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 a realm of offering freedom that that was so beyond me and so part of the big picture of humanity, of you know of, of things like as big as like what of Jesus. I mean, it's, it's huge. It just felt so huge, and I got to be a part of it, and I got to be an agent of it. Yeah. And and I and uh um and I think one of them I feel like my skill set really was I think that the 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 person was really scared. They um, had just been abused so heavily, so to have a guy come and try to talk to them, I'm sure it was a huge barrier for them. Yeah. But I think my experience and um, in, in sort of my expertise, I was able to still mitigate that. So I feel like that my gifts were used. Yeah. Um, and then the other time, I think I was just I was there for safety, and, and, it, and it, the girl still got rescued, and it was. But both of them, I felt like this is so above me. This is such a huge. I mean, this this is a part of. God's huge plan to bring freedom to everybody. And yeah. So, just I felt like that is so cool that I get to be a part of this. I, it's it's not even like man, I got to spend two hours of my day doing this. I'll do it because I love God. But it just I wish that I you know it was it was such a I am so honored to be a part of this. Yeah. It is so cool that that God has has allowed me to be a part of this and and, and to be a tool here. So that's awesome. Um, the the listeners need to know as well that your wife Nicole. Yeah. Um, with the Jonah Project, with her church, just yeah. just you guys as a family, right. she's an advocate for humanity too in a yeah. really major way. I mean, you guys are, are members of a great family, right. but y- you have worked on the relocation side, and you and your wife together have also walked out healing on on many different levels with many different survivors and victims. Yeah. Um, and that's really powerful and something that I was holding off as a surprise for you. So before okay. we segue into into some of the other stuff that I want to really ask you about today, sure. okay. uh, we do something on this show that you didn't know about. I had no idea. Um, and and so today we are gonna we we do something that's called a Freedom Fighter of the Day. Oh, okay. So we will just honor people um, mm-hmm. that we see doing good stuff. Okay. Um, and typically, it, sometimes we'll pick somebody famous. Okay. I did Jackie Robinson one day. Oh, I right mean, that, yeah. right. And then sometimes we pick people that we know their name is never going to be in the paper, or oh. probably not. Okay. In fact, I prefer to pick freedom fighters who are out there doing the thing, yeah. and, and people may not know their name otherwise. But today's freedom fighter of the day, want to honor Nick's wife, Nicole Goodwin. Oh, man. Um, she is an amazing young woman. Yeah. Um, I would just plug a couple of things that she's into. She okay. teaches dance at a studio called A Time to Dance. Yep. Over on Post and Garland, um, so so shout out to a Time to Dance studio as well. Uh, they're they're just her mom Kathy manages a studio, owns a studio, runs a studio. Nicole kind of does that with her, along with her sister. Um, the, the family kind of they're they're all they're dancers, they're into all this kind of stuff. But but what's awesome about their studio is they serve kids there. Um, in a way where kids are learning to dance that might not otherwise be able to afford it or be accepted in other, um, I don't know, 
hoity-toity ballet studios right. or whatever. It's, they, do, they do some awesome work in there. But the special reason we wanted to, to honor Nicole is because, one, I get to have her husband on the show today. Mm -hmm. But Nicole is a, is, has been a friend of my family's for the decade that I've known you. Yeah. Um, an amazing lady that does... I mean, she gets dirty, man. She yeah. rolls up her sleeves. Definitely. She does hands-on care for survivors and victims in our community. And, and the big reason we want to give a shout-out to our Freedom Fighter of the Day, Nicole Goodwin, is that I have never seen, no matter how crazy the situation is, mm -hmm. if she has an opportunity yeah. to dive in and, and shine a light into some dark places, she says yes. She says yes every time. And I, I, we just, so we're honoring Nicole Goodwin as our Freedom Fighter of the Day on the Free Rain Show um, as being someone who gives just an amazing example of what Jesus looks like with skin on. So shout out, Nicole Goodwin, Freedom Fighter of the Day. I mean, in all honesty, I couldn't have gotten anywhere close to what I've done without her. Like, she's, she's a huge inspiration. As far as her saying yes, she's completely obedient to the Lord as far as what she's called to do. And again, it's, you know, it's not obedience like... Oh, I'm watching too much TV. The Lord's telling me to stop watching TV. Or I'm using so no. It's obedient. Like, like here's an opportunity for you to go heal somebody. Or here's an opportunity for you to speak something to someone's life. Here's an opportunity for you to give a trafficking girl uh, free hip hop classes and speak to her life. You know what I mean? Right now, now you know what, what's amazing. You know, yeah. you mentioned the kind of legalistic view of oh, I guess yeah. God's telling me to watch less TV. Yeah, yeah. Here's how it works. Right. We're just gonna do this for the listeners since me and you are here today. Right. We're gonna do this. Yeah. Okay. You might yeah. end up watching. <gasps> Less TV right. <laughs> if you have to turn it off to go help a go human somebody. being who's yeah. hurting, right? <laughs> yeah. But what we're not saying, I just want to key on this yeah. because me and you talk about this stuff a lot, and it yeah. does, it's totally Nicole's approach. Definitely. She's not a legalistic human nope, being. she's absolutely not. She just happens to probably watch less TV than maybe the average person out there because she's busy loving somebody. Yeah. And so um, what God asked her to do was not to necessarily turn off the TV. What God asked her to do was open her heart to go loving somebody. And... And the, the side benefit, yeah. right, is that she probably yeah. is a little bit more tuned into humanity definitely. than the average Joe out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, it, you're totally right. It's definitely that. It's that. It's no, no, I, I have an opportunity to do something incredible here. Yeah. I have an opportunity to free somebody. I have an opportunity to give somebody health and healing. Yeah. And maybe I'm tired or maybe I have this other thing I'm trying to do. But I know that that's what the Lord calls me to do. And she's so obedient to that. And, yeah. And like I said before, it brings a fulfillingness there. It's not just that, man... I'm going to get mine soon, but now I'm just going to sacrifice myself and be broken and be sad because whatever. No, it's not about – it's very fulfilling. It's, it's, it's a quality of life that's incredible. And when you have those moments like, holy smokes, I cannot believe I was a part of that, that God let me in on that. And that's, that's, that's the reward, so to speak, of that obedience. And so, It's cool that you guys get to share that as a couple because yeah. that's something I know that my wife and I – you know, so uh, the listeners, I think, may know this, but my wife is now actually the executive director – of the nonprofit I started, of the Jonah yeah. Project, and yeah. I've stepped away from doing that. She's handling the hands-on care piece, and so she works. Our wives work together yeah. on loving human beings and bringing them back to Radical. life. And so, yeah. um, we're both pretty blessed Definitely. that um, that that's what they choose to do with their time outside mm -hmm. of loving us and raising kids and yeah. um, and, and else, teaching yeah. and everything else that they do. Um, now, it's kind of transitioning back to you, good that's sir. Good. Okay. Um, I love talking about myself. Yeah, right. right. Um, you have, you've got a way that, that, that you feel God's kind of called you to bring some freedom and some healing, and, and we're going to talk about that. Our segue into that is, so, so you, you deal with mental health. Yeah. You're a mental health doctor. We're going to talk about specifically what that looks like. Sure. Um, but when we're, when we're initially connected, it, you and I were, were – we're together at church as friends, and then we're doing this um, anti-trafficking thing together. Yeah. And we're, I've called you down to help me with an intake where we had someone who had uh, maybe an addiction issue or yeah. a mental health issue that needed to be addressed. Right? We want to help this person navigate that, yeah. which is what you do. But I want to talk about what the landscape looks like. Let's, let's kind okay. of go you know, back in time a little bit. Okay. Prior to you really feeling that God has called you into this realm professionally sure what's the landscape look like and i i know this is a, a huge question so we'll just attack it right. like it's a, a big huge um you know big huge sandwich and we're just going to start biting little pieces off of it uh -huh. and, and see where we get right the landscape of mental health mental health service yeah 
uh, I don't know, well, you know, ready, go. I mean, what is that? <laughs> so I don't know how approachable that is. I'll, I'll do my best, and if I start rambling about too many things, we'll, we can try to make it more focused. But uh, so I guess we'll start, you know, the, the care. If you were someone right. who's like, hey, I, I need to address some mental health okay. issues that I have, yeah. that a family member has, that a friend has, yeah. how do I even begin to do that? What yeah. does that look like? It's very, it's very complicated, and I hear that a lot. It's, it's, it's a challenge right now. I don't know anywhere, but I'm only very versed in Spokane. It's if you if you wanted to get a mental health issue addressed in Spokane, there's a lot to navigate. And and I've talked to a lot of people um, who even come up to me for advice, and they say, hey, "Look, this is my family member or myself. How do I get help?" Mm. And there's so many factors there, and um, and it, it ranges from different insurances. Who do your insurance cover? Does your insurance cover this person? You know. Um, there's, I read an article about how some, it's hard for insurances to keep doctor lists up to date. So you go through a list of covered doctors and you start calling them. Well, this person's no longer in business. This person doesn't work there anymore. And so you, it's really hard to find an updated list of, of providers who can help you. Uh. And then you, and then, and then you go maybe make an appointment, and uh, and it's three months down the road because everyone's booked out because there's there's a huge need there. Um, and so maybe your your primary care, who I think are seeing. 70%, 80% of the mental health, maybe they're comfortable with your treatment and they can continue your medications or start you on medications, but their license limits them to how much mental health they can see or how severe a mental health they see. And so maybe they try you on a couple of antidepressants and now you have to go find a psychiatrist because now you've become too complicated. So backing up from, I want to come back to that. Yeah. Um, I would imagine the process of figuring out for a human being. Yeah. That I might need some mental health help. Definitely. That that process in and of itself right. is 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 complex, tricky, um, difficult, maybe. It's extremely, and and again, you think about humans, and if the listeners stop and think about how we handle our own problems, like I just took my my car to the mechanic only because I was afraid it wasn't going to break anymore. I thought the brakes were just going to stop working on me. That's how long I waited before I was just like, no, I got to take that, it That whole where it's squeaking and it's screeching. It's like, it you know, doesn't stop right away. Right, and, yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, this is terrible. What are you doing? They keep bringing your kids around in this car. But that's the way we approach problems as humans. We're busy. We're, you know, we, um, there's a lot of face that we, that we, that we lose on a day-to-day -day basis. And so we try to save the face we can. I think a big part of me not going to the mechanic is I don't want them to think you can't take your own car. You know, I, I get so insecure about these things. It's such a human thing. Yeah. And so a lot of times when mental health issues um, when somebody's trying to address mental health issues, it's it's not like a oh I'm I'm concerned I'm at risk for this I would like to start taking steps to prevent it. It's a no 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 I have exhausted all my resources. Yeah. I've 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 gone too long without sleep. My job I'm I, I might have just lost my job. I'm going to lose my job. I just got demoted. You're looking at it. I need help yesterday. Right. By the time we – it's probably like a lot of things, right? We right. by the time we figure out that we needed it, we actually like you said we needed it yesterday. Yeah. So now I'm I'm tired. Yeah. There's been relational damage maybe yeah. in my life. Exactly. Uh, maybe uh, something that's affected me financially. Like you said, I've had an outburst at work, or I've had a disagreement, right. or something where, or maybe I ha it hasn't gone to that point yet. But it's to the point now where I'm like, I've got to quit this job because the job is killing me. Yeah. You know, this is where uh, human beings find themselves, and and now they're in that mindset. So back to where we left off. Yeah. They're in that place, yeah. and now they're looking down a list of doctors and figuring out that every other one actually doesn't take their insurance yeah. anymore, if they mm -hmm. even have insurance. Or, or even if they have an opening anytime soon. If today. they have an opening. So now they've figured out that they needed help yesterday. Yep. They've, they, they're, they're probably massively, massively impacted just from this process of trying to find a doctor. They've found a doctor, yeah. and they're three months out. Three months out. Or they... Or they even a real issue, they got a person, they go see them, and they don't vibe with the person, right? We don't get the vibe with them. You get the, you know, you interview, you know, you, you, there's an interview process for everything except for health care. And you go, a lot of people go finally get into an appointment. Wow, and that's even good. I didn't thought the, interview process for yeah. everything except for health care. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I've, and I've had problems connecting with patients at some point. It's, it's, it's like it's amicable. You just don't get to get along with everyone, and you're in such a vulnerable spot. And so I hear a lot from people like, I got in. With this person, and we're not. By, I don't know. It's 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 a very difficult landscape. It's it's, it's a hard it's a hard time to be mentally. You're ill. probably feeling massively self conscious. You've felt you've you've yeah. got this doctor. You've waited They're three months yeah. to see the doctor. Yep. 
you totally are not vibing with this doctor, but you're probably deathly afraid if, I mean, I, this, it's this doctor or nothing. I can't yeah. wait another three months. Right. I have to just settle here. And, and even if it's not, I'm not saying that there's, these people are potentially inept or that it's just, it's, you know, there's, you know, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stake there. And yes. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, expectation built on that. Yes. And also these providers are, you know, you're like one of 20 people I am seeing today. And so, you know, if, if it you, feels You are rushed, kind of just a number yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, if it feels rushed, you know, it probably is rushed. They probably, the, the provider is feeling rushed. And it, it's kind of the model that we have right now because even if seeing you in 30 minutes when you should, when I need it, be a little, it's better than not seeing you at all. And so. Yes. It's, it's, it's just so there's a, in a it, if doing my best I can. Yes. I'm trying everything again, but. Um, We've talked briefly just about the issue with, with also with pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Asking someone who does this for a living. Right. Because there's, there's this, I, I don't want to say urban myth or urban legend. Yeah. Um, but I think there's some times where it's approached that way. I think the listeners just need to hear um, how much truth is there mm -hmm. to the idea that it is flat out easier, more efficient, or a, a t you know less time consuming mm -hmm. to prescribe someone medication versus figure out a way to help in a maybe a healthier or more a long term fixed type way. Yeah. How much truth is there to physicians prescribing medication when something else could be done? I um, I'll I'll just kind of answer that in a roundabout way because ideally you you do everything that you can right. Okay. Um, they've you know. There's there's no um, there's lots of evidence that shows you know talking about mental health specifically therapy is evidence based medications that are approved are evidence based therapy plus medication is is um, more I mean it has more efficacy right okay. it's ideal together okay um, and so ideally you have providers who are looking at what are all of the ways right if I'm talking to somebody with depression I'm talking to them about daily you know weekly exercise I'm talking to them about their diet I'm talking to them about medication options I'm talking to them about therapy. Um, a lot of a lot of my clients right now are coming from therapists, and so a lot of times there's situations like no 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 I've I've been in therapy for three months we've talked about it we've tried all these different things okay and they've recommended medication to me and then I waited for you and now and now okay. I'm here seeing you okay because so, there's sometimes where I, whether it's a news article or just hearing it it sounds yeah. I've heard people talk about their kids with yeah. like with with Ritalin or with different right. things where where they're like the doctor just wants to slap them on medication and. Yeah. I, I'm not saying that there aren't bad doctors. For crying out loud, there are news articles that news articles, yeah. people you, going you to jail. Yeah. You see people going to jail over over yeah. you know opioid prescriptions Definitely. and things like that. But generally, you're saying the approach um, when it's done right yeah. is to combine right. um, therapy and medication. Yeah. And then that being said, um, you know you're looking at a lot of factors here with with treating somebody, and if they needed help yesterday, yeah, I want you to feel that relief. You know, especially if we're talking about something like suicide, right? I want you to be not suicidal as soon as possible. So, I see. So, so medication gonna, as like an emergency, right. like Band-Aid, uh, while we figure other stuff yeah. out. Yeah. And I think, in, in, um, and so sometimes you even take a dual approach with medication, where one medication is meant to, make, to, to, to help treat the acute symptoms, the short-term symptoms, and then another medication that has been shown by research to prevent, to prevent future episodes of the bill. So you have like like chronic depression, but you're currently feeling very suicidal, maybe I give you a medication that will help with these symptoms, but because a lot of mood disorders are episodic, whereas they kind of come and go, okay. like, like I'll have a month of depression, then I'll feel good for three weeks, and then I have another month of depression without really any provocation, yeah. I'm also interested in preventing those future um, episodes of depression. And so using a, a pharmacology approach to do that, um, but that is, it's tricky in a sense that I really have to understand how your mental health is currently presenting right. and how it has presented in the past and how it will likely present in the future. And so it's, you, um, it requires a, a pretty in-depth um, assessment to get all that information. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to treat the disease, right? Right. The disease process and, and not just trying to present, treat the most current prominent symptom. Right, right, right. I would imagine with any, I mean, if we're talking about flus and colds, the idea Definitely. is is actually getting to the root of what's causing yes. the runny nose. Um, we, we're going to lean into a break. Okay. But when we come back, yeah. I want to talk uh, with you and ask you some questions and let you share with the listeners 
about where you've been called to kind of enter mm. this realm of, of mental health, this, yeah. this world of helping people navigate their pain and their hurt. Yeah. Um, and we're going to talk about something called the Goodwin Health Cafe. Yeah, let's do it. When we get back uh, from break, you are listening to the Free Rain Show on KSBN 1230 AM. Hey, Spokane, this is Nicole with the Time to Dance. Do you love dance? Or maybe you've dreamed about exploring the art of movement. Come visit us at a Time to Dance in the Garland District at the corner of Garland and Post. Explore the freedom and dance can bring. We offer high-end education, experienced instructors. Visit us on Facebook at A Time to Dance or call 509-995-5207. Now for details, that's 995-5207. Come join us on the dance floor. There's a little Liz Vice coming at you. We love Liz. Yep. Uh, Liz is awesome. If you do not know Liz Vice, you need to get on some Spotify. That CD's in our car, dude. We listen to that CD all the time. Oh uh, yeah, she's the bomb. Yeah. She's the bomb. Um, did we go to that concert together? I don't. We didn't like go together, but we. But uh, I went because it was like where everyone was going. So okay. that was the place to be at that time. Okay. And so I didn't know where she was. I didn't even know where that place was at. But okay. We okay. showed up and it was dope. It was nice. Good. Nice. Okay, so um, we are back. Thank you for listening to the Free Range Show on 1230 AM KSBN. We are with our special guest, Nick Goodwin. I'm going to say that as many times as I can today. I like hearing it. Well, every every time I say special <laughs> guest, I see you kind of get a twinkle in your eye. Yeah, yeah, it's just so special. Like, like am I, I'm, I'm Aaron's special guest. That's right. I'm so, a special boy. That's right. So uh, we, um, we were talking. Mm-hmm previous segment about a couple of things and we got into and we're, we're gearing towards Goodwin Health Cafe and so we're talking a little bit about the approach to mental health and kind of very very big generalities but what that landscape kind of looks like and for our listeners that are just joining us Dr. Nicholas Goodwin mm-hmm. I'm going to add Nicholas when I say doctor now because it sounds it sounds more like a doctor it really like, it a really does. Of a doctor like Nick one. sounds like he just got out of medical school <laughs> But Nicholas Goodwin. Little, little, you heard about little yeah. Nicky? He went yeah. to medical school. In fact, we're going to start a show. <laughs> we're going to do our own. Um, it should probably be a sitcom. Okay. But it'll be called Nicholas Goodwin, MD. I like it. Yeah. So I want to. Except for its PhD. It's, no, it's actually it's DNP. DMP. It's Doctorate in Nursing Practice. Okay. And that's like the practical, like the practical nurse practitioner doctorate. That's like the terminal degree for nurse practitioner. Okay. Which actually, that's a perfect segue. Yeah. To what we really want, the juice and the meat of what we wanted to get in today, which mm-hmm. is some stuff that you're doing out there in the mental health field now. Yeah. So, DNP. DNP. Doctoring. Doctor. No. I'm, a, I'm a doctor of nursing practice. Correct. Okay. I'm a nurse doctor. I'm, I'm telling doctor you, nurse. you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's so, so okay, ladies and gentlemen, what that really means is that Nick went to a lot of school, like nine years of school. Yeah, to do what he does. And uh, and let's talk a little bit about this. You used to work at Eastern Washington. Eastern State Hospital. Eastern State Hospital, excuse yeah, me. which is like one of two state hospitals in Washington. The other one's, oh, I don't know where, by Seattle. Okay. And that's Western State Hospital. I used to work as a floor nurse at Eastern State Hospital, um, and I would work with people who have been hospitalized for mental health issues. Okay. Yep. Uh, and now you are doing your own thing, aside yeah. from helping the Jonah Project with yep. relocation and care and, and helping them assess victims sometimes. Yeah. Um, you have started an organization, a company, if you mm. will. LLC. An LLC called the Goodwin yeah. Health Cafe. Yeah. GoodwinHealthCafe.com. Yep, GoodwinHealthCafe.com. Okay. So you guys can check this stuff out. If you're not driving... Okay, if yeah. you're doing the, the commute, because we know that sometimes you're listening on a Monday or Thursday evening yeah. in the afternoon commute, you, you just get Even to listen. Yep. Okay, but if you're one of our note takers, and we know we have a few of you out there, or you're listening on a Saturday, yep. you can check out GoodwinHealthCafe.com, and, uh, and let's just get into this. Sure. What was your reason okay. for starting the Goodwin Health Cafe? Right on. That's a great question. So I, um, when I graduated... When I was becoming, and I graduated, um, 
more than a year ago, but I've been practicing for about a year. Um, I I really felt like I wanted to do my own thing. I really felt to sort of um, try to try to, to look at these these issues in the healthcare and the mental healthcare community, see what I could do, see what what could be some answers, and and I wanted to create a company, not really knowing how, but wanting to create a company that that helped um, fill in some of these gaps, or at least helped, you know, live in some of these these blank spaces to help people who have been stuck there. And that's really what I wanted to do. I, I, when you say I, blank spaces, kind of the idea of bridging gaps? Yeah, yeah, like the person who has to wait three months for an appointment or the person who, you know, um, who maybe has some mental health issues coming on. Maybe they're having a hard time at work, but they're having a hard time noticing it. So maybe, you know, maybe I'm able to get to them earlier. Maybe yeah. I can talk to them a little bit about you know, let's talk about what's going on in your life. We don't have to talk about meds. A lot of people were scared about talking about meds, right? It was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to be an antidepressant. I don't blame you, man. That's that's a that's a big deal, right? Pharmaceuticals is a big deal. There's a lot of there's a lot of risk benefit there, but maybe we could talk about some other stuff that can that we can do to to maybe make it so, you you know, your functioning improves, or your, the quality of your life improves, or your relationship improves. And so, um, and I wasn't really sure how. I had a lot of ideas. I'm kind of an idea guy. And uh, I think really what God showed me was that he had some ideas, mm. and he wasn't going to let me in on them all the time. <laughs> and so what I realized at first, especially for their first year, the more that I tried to make something happen, um, the more difficult and sludgy it was. The more I sort of sat back and allowed things to happen, the more opportunities came about. And mm. the more I sort of saw, no, 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 this is the, these are the people that I want you to serve, yeah. you know, Nick. And so... I, I, that's something I've seen in all sorts of different walks when people are doing something that's you know minis, kind of ministry related. I, yeah. I tend to see this a lot. Yeah. Is they they even even if it's God's idea and they go okay now God I've got you. I've, right. I know I, I know you. I I got it from here. Yeah, I got it from here. Right. <laughs> as as opposed to well what got you to the point where you realized it wasn't your idea but God's was that daily conversation <laughs> and you just stopped having that. Yeah 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 yeah. Well, that yeah. And I think from the beginning I had I wanted to to create. I wanted to create, start kind of with the environment, and I haven't done this necessarily super tangibly yet, but I wanted to, to I knew, I knew what some of, a lot of the barriers were for people going in, and I don't even want to sit in a waiting room at a mental health place. I don't want to have to sit there and be stared at and be judged. I just can't do it. I've heard that all the time. And so how do you create an environment that, that addresses that stigma? How do you, how do you go in an environment that's not, it's not toxically clinical, right? Sometimes we like clinical because it feels scientific and feels expert. Mm. But sometimes clinical can make our can make somebody with no hypertension have hypertension, right? That's why you have to take someone's blood pressure three times before you can diagnose them with hypertension because there's this thing called white coat syndrome where you see the white coat and all of a sudden, you know, you're frozen. You, that's why you forget to say stuff in the doctor's office. That's why they have to take my blood pressure a bunch of times? Yeah. <laughs> my gosh. I'm like, it literally, yeah. you take it three times and it's the same yeah, all three yeah. times. I like, see why? the numbers. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. like, what are we doing? I, yeah. and it, by the way, yeah. there's two things I absolutely hate. Let's hear them. Having my blood taken. Okay. And the blood pressure test is the worst. I hate that feeling yeah. on my arm. It's No, Aaron, it's a hug. It's giving your arm a hug. Yeah, I disagree. <laughs> If somebody gave me a hug on the street like that, we'd have some problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, go with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So I, I wanted to create, and, and I still, this, I'm very passionate about this. This is one of the, the few things that, I've, that I've, I'm still very passionate about. I want to create a, a place where people can come, where they can be, and they can be calm, right? In, in the psych world, the psych nurse, we call this a milieu. And we refer to this when we talk about inpatient psych. It's someplace that's calm. That's someplace that's calming. It's someplace that's therapeutic just in its nature. Is where you can sit and be at peace. Maybe like our like, studio. Like, like the studio. Oh well, yeah, or like the studio or like the dance studio. No, like our like. Well, your dance studio is cool, yeah. but like this radio this studio. This place. This is chill. Yeah. This is this is it's therapeutic and where people can be, where people can talk to each other and socialize when they've been so when they've been when people stare at them in the street when they're walking because they can tell that they're mentally ill, right? Mm. But you can go and I can and, and and professionals can come and talk to you like you're a human being, mm. like you're on the same level. Where you can talk to your peers, right? And we call this a milieu, and, it, and it's something that I wanted to try to create effectively. Sometimes it doesn't work, right? If someone's violent in a milieu, it's no longer therapeutic, right? But something where you can create an outpatient setting or, or in a private practice setting where people can come and they can feel not judged, where they don't feel like they're sitting in a waiting room. Where they, they can engage humanity yeah. without, the, without having to jump through hoops. Exactly. That's and awesome. so cafe was kind of what came to mind. Like I want it to be kind of like a cafe. When you come to the place... I don't know if we'll have coffee, right? But I mean, like, but I'm, I can go get coffee. Coffee's easy, right? But I don't know if I'm going to sell, like, you know, the, I don't know, they're called biscuitos or, like, scones or something. But someplace that's <laughs> chill, yeah. that, that you can 
not that I want you to sit in the waiting for hours, but someplace that you don't feel like, I need to get out of this place. I need to get seen and just get out of here. So is the, driving crazy. is the Goodwin Health Cafe a physical place? So I have a physical location okay. that I'm roommating with you guys. Oh, you guys are the Jonah Project. Okay. And, uh, I can, should I say the address? Well, I mean, that's what I was going to ask it's, you. So it's not like it's 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 – I see clients like once a week. Yeah. So it's not like you can come to it and come in and get like a brochure. Okay. So we should probably leave the address okay, let's leave off. That. Yeah. At, at I just point, didn't know if you saw patients there and we should yes. let people know or if no. it's something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then we'll yeah, keep it private. Yeah. I see patients there and if you become a patient, I'll tell you. I mean, we can, you know, it's just not like, it's not like a place that's like. It's a private address to your patients. Yeah. 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 Private address to patients. Yeah. And, um, and, and I don't know if that will be the, the future, you know, it, uh, Good one Health Cafe, it's perfect for where we're at. Yeah. It's, um, you know, but it's, it's it's kind of what I see us becoming. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a place where you can go and you can, you know, maybe there's tables. Maybe you can go a half hour and meet somebody there before your appointment. And you can talk about mental health issues like it's an actual part of your not life, not something that you have to hide, not something that you have to put on, you know, this face on and pretend that you're not thinking about killing yourself every second of the day. Right. If, if there was someone that was listening to this show – that has just feels already from something that they've heard. They just feel like, you know, I I want to reach out and and talk to to Doctor Nick. I yeah. I uh, but may I call you Doctor Nick? You can call me Doctor Nick. All right, that sounds good. cool. So sounds like I'm a DJ. Yeah. Welcome to Doctor Nick. Yeah. Doctor Nick. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and, and if they wanted to, I, we know they can go to GoodwinHealthCafe.com. Yeah. Um. Is there a number they can also call? Yeah. They can call um, 509, I should say it, yeah. say it loud, 509-415-3507, yeah. um, and, and I'll, I'll let my assistant know that you're doing it, and you can, you can say, hey, I'm interested in learning more about this, I'm interested in becoming a client. So and it's 509? Yep, yeah, 415-3507. Okay, and we're goodwinhealthcafe.com, yeah. and we'll, we'll, get, we'll repeat those at the end of the show, but sure. I just, in case anybody's listening right now and just feels like, this guy's kind of speaking to me, Sure. why wait? Yeah, <laughs> I, need, I just, just do it now, yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah. okay. Give me up. Um, and so that's this environment that I want to some, and I think this is God's vision too. And I think God has something very specific for this and, um, that people, I mean, you and I have talked about this a lot. Yeah. Biblical healing right. was about the reconciliation Definitely. of relationship and, and, and the repairing. Are we getting into this? Let's do this. Um, no, I want to talk more about good <laughs> health cafe, but, but this is, you know, when we, you know, when, when we get into depth and we talk yeah. about Jonah Project, right? Yep. Why Jonah Project does what it does yeah. the way it does? Right. We say, well, there's a there's a Christ basis for yeah. this for loving this yeah. way, and I guess I just wanted to point out to the listeners the way that you're approaching how you run Goodwin Health Cafe, yeah. compassionately and all the good stuff you you know, but it 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 really is about your feeling of God's heart for people, yeah, and it's representative of of God's heart in you, Nick, and yeah. and um, and for people. So that that kind of relational aspect um, is is a part of that. Yeah, and I want to say real quick too. I um, like I love God, I love Jesus, and He's the reason why I'm doing all this too. But um, I'm not going to try to be pushing anybody. You know, like if you come in like, oh no, Nick's a Christian. If I go in, he's going to try to like make me do some weird Christian therapy stuff. Um, I won't bring it up if you, you know what I mean. It's I'm going to beat you where you're at. Yes. So I, yes. Um, I love I love people where they're at. I, um, I'm not going to talk about like well if you like I think I had a friend come up to me and said she went to counseling and they said well we think a lot of your issues are that you're doing too much Halloween stuff, right? Wow, that's <laughs> brutal. It's just brutal. It's just like man, where's that even coming from? So yeah, I, um, you know you want to talk about God, you want to talk about Jesus, come talk to me. You want to come talk about your 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 Buddhist faith and how that's bringing you healing. Sweet, I'm down to talk about it. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be really engaged because I don't know a lot of people that are Buddhist, so I'm going to be interested in learning more. But yeah. so I'm going to meet you where at. I'm going to if, if you're spiritual, sweet. If you're not, I mean, I, the yeah, right I think there. that's that's a good thing for us to say. Goodwin Health yeah. Cafe, you, Nick. You obviously you're you're a Jesus follower. Yeah. Um, but that is that's certainly not a requirement of people um, to be seen by you. Yeah. Um, y y this is about you um, with the resources and skills you have. Yeah. meeting people where they're at or where they're at being able to meet you. Definitely. Let's talk about this idea of being mobile. Yeah, yeah. Um, you want me to, so um, initially my, I didn't have an office. Initially I was like, I'm just going to go to people's houses. I'm just going to go to see people online, Skype them. And it's not Skype, but it's a medical Skype that's, you know, HIPAA compliant or it's okay. um, confidential. Okay. Which I don't, it's. It's like Skyping through kind of a secure channel yeah, or something. Channel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, but I think a lot of what I found is that people really like that face to face. And so, and, and some people were cool to come to the house, some people weren't. 
Um, and so um, a lot of times people wanted to meet me first. And I'll have people drive three hours to come meet me, like literally, just because they want that initial. They want to see me. They want to know that I'm a real person. They want to, like, see, you know, see where I'm at. And then, yes. that's it. Yeah. And then from there on, it's, it's online. And so um, I haven't been necessarily going to a lot of people's houses. I have been going to, like, adult family homes or people who are just cannot leave, yeah. right, group homes or um, because of disabilities and stuff. So you had someone that, that, re that required help with medication, mm -hmm. and they were unable to leave their home. Right. They could contact GoodwinHealthCafe.com, set an appointment, and you actually – you can go meet them mm -hmm. um, and help them walk through the process of – that beginning process of care. Yeah. Or you could also do it via Skype mm -hmm. if that was more comfortable for them. But Definitely. to your point, if they just wanted to see Nick as a real guy, yeah. you can make that happen. You can make that happen. Yeah. That's awesome stuff. I, yeah. I, you know, and I know this isn't where you're at right now, but there we have this, the, you know, right now we have the, the mayoral election going on. Mm -hmm. uh, votes and stuff happening, right? There's a bunch of stuff going on in Spokane with politics and seemingly surrounding the issue of homelessness. Okay. And one of the big things with homelessness, right, is dealing with mental health. Absolutely. It, it, it almost seems like what this city really needs, <laughs> excuse me, is like a thousand Nick Goodwins <laughs> that are mobile, right. that, that have the skills, the training, the resources to, to go out there and start serving. Right. I mean, it just, it just seems like this process... Yeah. You know, I'm just pulling for, for, you know, and I know there's just you right now, mm -hmm. and, and, and we, we, there isn't another Nick Goodwin. Yeah. But I guess my prayer, my hope is that, that potentially we could explore this expanding and being able to serve people that maybe don't have a residence. Is that something that, that has come across your heart or your, oh, your, yeah. your thinking so far? Absolutely. Well, you, uh, Jonah serves those, you know, that yeah, population. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, uh, we're serving the same and, population. And, and, uh, um, and so being able to... to you know, see people that Jonah has housed. Oh, in some right. Is is it, it, you do it, and like I said, it's it's so it's not like I did anything differently than I would have. Um, so actually, if but, there's agencies that are listening, if there's someone who works for an, a care agency yeah. or a care provider that can help kind of broker that. Is it, right? Are you are you looking? Are you open to other care providers out there calling up Goodwin Health Cafe and saying, Hey, we want to see how we can contract you? Sweet. Okay. And okay. That, that's a lot of what I've done so far. Okay. Because it just takes a long time to get insurances to cover. And because I want to serve this population, because I want to serve every population, and, and this happened at first where I was trying to get started and everybody was calling, like, hey, do you take Medicaid? Hey, do you take Medicaid? And I was like, um, I need to take Medicaid. I need it to help people who need to help, right? And so it just took a long time to get credentialed. So a lot of the work that I've been doing in the last year has been contracted work where I go to an agency and I serve their population. And you take Medicaid now? I take Medicaid now. Ladies and gentlemen, listeners, this is a big deal. Except, except Mary Group. Okay. Medicaid except Mary Group. Yeah. Okay. That's good. We should get that out not there. Because, nothing wrong with Mary Group other than they, uh, they just haven't told me that we're good to go. So I've, gotcha. asked, them, I've asked them very nicely. Okay. Just, just so we're waiting. Potential Mary Group's coming maybe. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Molina Community Health uh, Plan of Washington Coordinated Care. So like I have Molina. Yeah. So you could help me. I could help you, buddy. Which, it which you do a lot. I just have never paid you for it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I didn't realize you had a Molina. I could have started signing them bills for this Oh, one. man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Okay, so so tell us a little bit um, about where Goodwin Ca Health Cafe is now. I yeah. mean, we've been talking about it, but where it is now and where you see it going. Okay, so what and we and I talked a little bit about this, and you even asked me about it. Medication, treating mental health, yeah, so complicated, yeah, and that's why, and and, and I think scary I, complicated, scary complicated, and that's why I wanted to be a professional, right, an expert in psychiatric mental health, and I think that comes with experience too, right. Um, but because I don't want just to, to say, okay, you sounds like you probably have depression, so I will give you an antidepressant to make you less depressed, which sounds really good in theory uh, and works for some people. It doesn't work for everybody because there's a lot to depression. And um, a lot of the um, approach to mental health, even the way we diagnose it, is based off of current symptomology, which can overlap with a lot of different diagnoses, right? So, so when my you say symptomology... I, I, I'm oh, going jargon. Is that jargon? Well, I, I think that our listeners are probably a little bit brighter than I am, but you, okay. just, you basically mean the, the study of symptoms? So I mean, I mean just a presentation of symptoms. Gotcha. So like, uh, oh, right, right, so right. So you know, I'm going to treat your depression even if your depression is due to a thyroid disorder. I see. But I'm not going to treat it with thyroid medication because I don't know that it's due to a thyroid disorder. I'm going to treat your anxiety um, that's due to uh, a, a several of these nutrients that you're deficient in. 
not because I know, but I'm going to treat it with antidepressants because I don't, I haven't looked to see, or I don't know how to look to assess you for these nutrient deficiencies. Right, okay. Because it's very complicated. Okay. Um, or it's not super complicated, but it, it's, it's, it, it does take a couple extra steps. Um, and so I really feel like, you know, when you, when you treat an infection, you know, there's a lot of symptoms, but we know we need to hit that infection up. We need to give that infection. We need to give you antibiotics to get rid of the infection. So looking at mental health through the lens of how do I look, how do I find um, the main contributing factor or the reason, the sole reason why you have these, this mental health issue, and how do I treat that? Um, how do I treat that, that issue? And I think that a lot of what I've been spending my time learning about recently, a lot of what I've been doing with my current patients is – trying to find an integrative approach, trying to, to look at, you know, the, the hormone levels, trying to look at the, the, um, the possible nutrient deficiencies um, and how to possibly treat these mental health disorders either non-pharmacologically or integrated where we use pharmacological approach to help with those immediate symptoms, but also um, kind of a, an integrative or um, a natural approach where we where we, where we identify deficiencies and then treat those deficiencies. I, I mean, it, it's really, it's the thing I think that, that many people who have been through, whether it's mental health or physical issues, mm -hmm. where they've, they've dealt with an issue much of their life. Yeah. Um, and they can get to the point where they start to give up that there's ever a solution. Definitely. And I have experienced personally and have seen people where, no, there's a solution. Yeah. It's just that it's been the symptoms that have been addressed your whole life. Exactly. Um, I mean, to the point where it's almost tragic. I've seen people that have dealt with yeah. pain, mental or emotional or physical pain, for way, way too long. Their whole lives. They'll, 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 sometimes people will die without having that relief. Yes. What an unfortunate circumstance. What an and unfortunate thing. Goodwin Health Cafe. And solve all those problems. <laughs> well, you, what you're going to do, what, We're gonna try. you're joking, but you're going to yeah. dive in with these yeah, people. definitely. And you're going to make sure that they understand that they're not alone, it Absolutely. sounds like. Yeah. There's so much to that connection. There's so much power to that, 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 that connection with somebody. And, and it's a priority of mine that when I meet somebody that I work with them, it's, it's about them and not me. And, and I want to make that connection. Because that connection, they've done research on that connection between a you know, therapist or a provider and the patient. And they have shown significant reduction in symptoms and, and, and even pathology just because of that, 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 that relationship. And so I know that starting where, with that relationship itself can be therapeutic. And then, then to go from there and to, to try to, to, to identify a personalized mental health treatment plan that, that matches with your values. If you really have a hard time with medication, then we don't have to talk about it. We can talk about alternative options. If you're if, – if it can be based off of um, – in income level two, some of these tests can be expensive. So let's maximize what we can do. Uh, but um, that's really where I see. So one last question I want to ask you. We're, we're about to, we've got to wrap up here. Right? Okay. And I'm just going to have to have you back. Yeah, we'll come back. But it sounds to me, um, you just, you're talking about like a relational connection. And yeah. it sounds to me like something else at Goodwin Health Cafe, because it's run by you, offers that mm -hmm. maybe isn't even on the radar of a typical service provider. Okay. Is the development and the building of a relationship. Yeah. Like when you go to a regular service provider, I'm not saying that there might not be a really cool person there at that program Definitely. or that service provider that decides that they're going to care about you. Right. But they're only paid to care about you when you're in front of them. In fact, yeah. they're like, they're actually told to establish boundaries like, and not right. see you outside of that working relationship. Absolutely. But it seems to me like there's a little bit more relational depth mm. with the Goodwin Health Cafe approach. I would like there to be. I, that's something that I'm that I'm successful in in my own just in the practice that I've done so far and my ex experience as a nurse, is how how effective that connection can be and and how uh, how far it can go as far as helping that person out and making that connection because making connections can be hard especially when you've had a life of chronic mental health issues right and 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 maybe you started to believe that because of your issues you can't connect anymore or you're not worthy of connection you're not worthy you of connection it. you don't deserve it um, you don't you know um, yeah, that's good stuff, man. What's the, what's the number that they can reach you again? 509-415-3507. If you don't have somebody manning the lines 24-7, you might leave a message and I'll hit you back. Perfect. Or GoodwinHealthCafe.com. I know you're doing me a personal solid by being here. You're a good friend of mine. I love this, bro. Um, awesome. But I love what you do. Thanks, man. Um, and I love your family. I appreciate mm -hmm. having you on. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Dr. Nicholas 
Nicholas Goodwin Lee. of the Goodwin Health Cafe. We're going to get him back on, and uh, we'll see you next week on the Free Range Show.